wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought of a lamb? Father and friend, great Jehovah, the one who spake and it was done, the one who command dead and it stood fast. Oh, Father and friend, we have come this evening in your presence once again. Lord, we brought a praise on our lips. At the same time, we have come as empty vessels to be filled. Fill us up, O oh great God, through your words. Be with this congregation and those online. Be with those in their homes and those who are on their way. Most of all, Father, you will be with your servant tonight. I acknowledge one more time my insufficiencies, my inadequacies. Take this lump of clay one more time, Lord. Mold and fashion your servant according to your similitude father we ask that you'll open the hearts of your children they have come 
And we pray that tonight you will keep the devil check tonight. Do a work tonight that eyes have never seen. But no ears heard. Father, we ask you to show up and show off in this place tonight. May self be slain. May self be crucified. Oh God, remove Harriet out of the way. But glorify your name one more time, Lord, through the preaching of your words. Now let the words of my mouth and the silent meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, let all God's people say. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. For Sing the song. You are the one that we adore. You get. Hearts always, always hunger, always hunger, always always hunger for. Come on and say, Hey, man. Come on and say, Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands and shout, Thank you, Jesus. God is such an awesome God. He deserves worship. Put your hands together for the praise team, the Ramdan brothers. They have been doing a tremendous job and we want to let them know we appreciate their service. What do you say? I don't know where that group came from a while ago who sang, but I don't know which church, but they blessed my heart. Amen. Put your hands together for that group uh, or that trio or whatever it was. I, I love good singing. Amen. I'm delighted, delighted to let you know that in spite of the weather, we are here to worship God. What do you say? Are you blessed to be here tonight? Amen. Time waits and nobody. Let me get straight to the point. There are some special people online and I want to make a shout out to my friend in, and brother in Clarendon. Remember I tell you the dub is in Clarendon is different from the one in Spanish town? Didn't I tell you that last night? But you, you know what I meant. I cleared that up, don't it? There's no duppy. It's the devil who impersonate your loved one. Amen? But I have a friend, Malcolm and family in Clarendon. They're online. They make sure they tell me they're online. And they're from folks all around online. They don't have time to call everybody name. But, but I'm, we're happy to have you and appreciate your service. Uh, there's a special lady, uh, Shante Clark from the Windsor Park. Uh, Windsor Park. Uh, if you're here, Shante, just please stand and be acknowledged. Today is her birthday. Uh, where is Shante Clark? I was told that she having a birthday today. She's all the way to the back. All right. When she comes, just let her know we're happy. We're celebrating with her her birthday today. Amen, somebody. And she's a guest. She is a what? Remember, we don't say visitor anymore, even though I have to say it so you can understand that I, I meant guest, but we soon fade out. Just like the new dollar that comes. We still use the old one. So as soon as you get used to the new one, we put away the whole one. What do you say? But we still use it until you get used to it. Is that all right? So all my guests in the house, just give the preacher a wave. Come on, all my guests. Uh, don't tell me you don't bring them tonight, you know. All my guests, come on, give the preacher a wave. I meant visitors. All my guests, oh, bless the Lord. We see some hands going up. Put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. Amen. If you look up front, you will see a gentleman looks as if he owns off of Los Angeles. <laughs> we have Dr. Pastor Joseph Smith. He was introduced earlier, my friend and brother. 
And we go far, way, way back from in the days of St. Anne. Look at that. When some senior pastors now were interned and in school. <laughs> you remember those days, just a few months ago or here or so, we were together in Antigua. We had a good time. We watched over 107 persons gave their lives to Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Powerful preacher of righteousness. Delighted to have you here, sir. Bring back greetings to Jamaica Union on the behalf of Central Jamaica Conference. Uh, she's here now? Is that Shante uh, Clark? Oh, she's coming up. All right. Once she can get to the camera, they can see her. Come on, let's sing one verse for me. Oh, the musicians are gone. They're, they're still here. This, I want to shake your hand. I want to shake your hand. Commendations to you. Why oh, you look so shy? Uh, and it's your birthday, yeah? All right. Put your hands together for her. It's good to have you. We love you, all right? Thank you very much. Time waits so nobody will get straight to the word. Straight to the word. What's the subject for tonight? Who will be able to stand? What's the subject for tonight? Who will be able to stand? Turn your Bible with me to the first book of 1 Peter. First what? 1 Peter chapter 4. We'll be looking at verse number 12 all the way down through to number 18. And I'm reading from the King James Version. Let's go together. Behold, think it not what? Beloved rather, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to do what? Read with the preacher tonight, which is to try you as though somewhat strange things happen unto you, but rejoice in as much as ye are what? Partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, he may be clad also with what? Exceeding joy. If he be reproached for the name of who? Christ, talk to me tonight. Happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. And their part he is evil spoken of. But on your part he is what? Glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as a evil doer or as a busy body in other men's matter are you hearing me yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him what glorify god on his and this behalf for the time is what can't hear you read a little louder for me please for the time is what i still want you go a little louder for the time is what is come that judgment must do what begin at the house of god and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of god verse number 18 together and if the righteous hear me carefully if the what if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? I trust that this message finds all of us this evening in the best of health. Even though many are optimistic that the worst is now behind but cautiously so very little is known about what the future holds for seemingly left unconsidered are the many efforts invested in getting the attention of mankind sad to say but sin is 
escalating to the point where it has reached its peak across the globe. It is constantly eating away the spiritual fiber of our integrity. Beloved, the world in which we have come to live is highly polluted and contaminated to the point where the reality of man's existence is fragile. Everywhere there is immorality, perversion, and corruption to the point where God has to stand almost on his own head to get the attention of mankind. Those are not my words. I borrowed those. Gone were the days when little boys used to be afraid of grown men. Today, grown men are afraid of little boys. Gone were the days when you could leave your doors open and sleep like a baby. Am I speaking the truth? Gone were the days when we could walk on the streets without looking over our shoulder. Can you do that in Spanish town? Gone were the days when from the pulpit preachers would preach the plain thus saith the Lord without compromising God's principles. But these are the days when most preachers are preaching unequated sermons that appeal to the lukewarm appetite of his dear believers. And so for the next few minutes as I speak to you under the caption, who will be able to stand? To stand in this context simple means taking a firm position for or against. And the truth of the matter is when it comes to God, there shouldn't be any middle ground. You're either with him or against him. Stand down means to withdraw. Stand for means to represent. Stand in means to deputize. And so the question is, how shall we stand in that great day? And we are talking about facing God for what is rightly deserved. For life in itself is like a grocery shopping. When you walk into that supermarket, pull out your trolley. Whatever is placed into that trolley will pass the smith coming up again. You can walk through the doors of the supermarket. You have to pay for it or you got to leave it. In Jamaica, you said you can sow peas and reap corn. Are you listening to me out here? Hear me, beloved, we are living in the twists and turns of life's most challenging moments. Can I say that one more time? We are living in the twists and turns of life's most challenging moments. And we, as we gazed into the unknown as a nation and as a church, we need to be seek, rather, refuge in the Christ who is unmovable, who is the rock of all ages, who is the source of life and the good giver of all good gifts. You believe that tonight, say amen. For ultimately, all of us will be standing at the judgment bar one day of God. Whosoever case will be decided whether for eternal life or eternal damnation. Turn with me if you please to Luke chapter 21 verse 36. Here how it reads. Watch ye therefore and pray always that he may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Some 
also David said in Psalm 76 verses number 7 through to number 9 thou even thou art to be feared and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven the earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth beloved may I say it is easier facing the devil than facing God did you get that it is easier facing the devil than facing God because when you face the devil you have God to help you but when you have to face God in the judgment who will be there to help you for we are at that moment I'm talking about the very brink of time when the eastern skies is soon to be departed and the very it is very imperative that as feeble mortal beings our decisions are guided by God can I say that one more time it is very imperative that as feeble mortal beings our decisions are guided by God for the picture is painted the only if you could see through your mind eyes that you would see that angels are holding back the wings of strife in order to save lost humanity revelation 7 verse 13 and 14 says and the elders and the elders answered saying what are these uh, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence they came and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said unto me these are they read with me these are they come on say it like you mean it these are they which came out of what great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb hear me carefully beloved the power of god is still available you believe that i said the power of god almighty is still available and if you place your hand in his hands he can give you this power to do his work I want you to understand, beloved, this power will keep us unspotted. Now is the time when our character must be washed and be made white in the blood of the Lamb. I thought I would hear a bigger hymn than that. I said, now is the time as a nation when we must overcome pride and passion of the flesh for the flesh are you listening to me for an immorality through the blood of the lamb now is the time when as a people we need to be awakened from an every effort must be garnered to make our common clean for the marriage supper now is the time as christians we ought to be conscious of our relationship with god because the truth sooner or later when you think it's peace and safety it will be sudden destruction are you hearing me out here listen beloved the call of the church is for us to humble ourselves in the hand of God and allow the Holy Spirit to purify our hearts because soon or later God will seal his people second chronicles chapter 7 verse number 14 said if my people say that with me if my what can you hear you if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from where heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land church i'm talking to my members first now is the time for every sleeping saints to wake up now is the time for every lukewarm member to fire up now is the time for every disgruntled online worshipers to straighten up now is the time for every dis 
organize a church member to cheer up. Now is the time for every discouraged Sabbath keeper to pray up. Am I speaking the truth? I said, now is the time for every depressed church goer to start looking up. Now is the time for every church gossipers to shut up. Now is the time for every dry bones to shake up. Now is the time for every tide robber to pay up. First John 2 verse 1 and 2 said, My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And if you sin, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the, he is the propitiation of for our sin and not for our only, but also for the sin of the old world. Can somebody say amen? Can I talk to my visitor, my guest now? Ladies and gentlemen, you have come here because you want to hear what God has to say to you. God is extending an invitation to give your life totally to him. Because if you step out by faith, God will reward you by faith. My friend, I stop to tell you that there is the power that is stronger than every other power, which is the Holy Spirit, and he is in this place. And if you haven't felt anything, you don't have anything. I stop to tell somebody about this who will be able to stand who will be able to stand the word of god says that judgment must begin at the house of god first and there are two kinds of judgments the investigative judgment and the executive matter of fact there are more than two types of judgment but i'm and i light in tonight those two the investigative judgment and the executive judgment. And while I'm speaking, one is going on right now, which is the investigative judgment. In fact, October 22nd, 1844, was the great disappointment when the world did not come to an end. As predicted by William Miller, a Baptist farmer who did the study on Daniel chapter 8 that led him to believe that Jesus' return was imminent. And when Christ did not come, they were bitterly disappointed. But those who held fast their faith and searched the scriptures came to the knowledge of what Daniel's prophecy was all about. It was about the cleansing of the sanctuary and not a prophecy of Christ's return as William Miller had believed. But it was the start of Jesus' final work of atonement. That was the beginning of the investigative judgment. And so it was after the great disappointment came the Advent movement in 1830s and 1840s. During the period of the second great awakening, the Seventh-day Adventist church was officially founded on May 21, 1863 at Battle Creek, Michigan, United States of America with leaders like Joseph Bates, James White, Ellen G. White, and J.N. Andrews currently holds a membership of over 25 million and still growing under the leader of Ted Wilson servant of the most high God in over 230 different countries. The Seventh-day Adventist Church 
is much more than a, a denomination. A matter of fact, the Seventh Day Adventist Church is one of the fastest growing and the most widespread churches worldwide. The Seventh Day Adventist Church is much more than just another denomination. According to Revelation 10, it was born of God out of the disappointment in 1844. Just as the New Testament church was born out of the disappointment at the cross in AD 31. And in both instances, the followers of Christ misunderstood the prophecy and were bitterly disappointed. But out of those disappointments, God providentially raised up a divine movement of destiny to impact the world according to Revelation 12, 17. Beloved, God's last day people will be characterized first of all by keeping his commandments and secondly having the testimony of Jesus Christ which the angel identified in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10 as the gift of prophecy according to Revelation 14 6 through to number 12 God's end time church will proclaim the message of the everlasting gospel in the context of the three angels and the second coming of Christ will be calling every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people to worship their creator by keeping the Sabbath there is no other religious movement in the face of this earth on the face of this earth that fits that criteria fit that pattern are you hearing me ladies and gentlemen there is no other church or denomination that meets the criteria of revelation 10 revelation 12 and revelation 14 and so in 1844 jesus entered the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary i want to say that let us slow up jesus entered the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary to begin judging who would be saved this final action before his second coming which was the announcement of the first angel's message in 1844 begins the investigative judgment and there are two kinds I did tell you of judgments the investigative judgment and the executive judgment and one is going on as I speak and repetition deepens impression I'm going to say it one more time so you can get it one is going on while I'm speaking as I said it beloved that you and I will have to stand we can't escape it we will have to stand at the judgment bar of God Hear me carefully, beloved. Christ's second coming is the fulfillment of the seventh seal. We are living in the dispensation of the sixth seal. All the signs have already fulfilled. It was last night or the night before, three o'clock we felt another earthquake. These are signs of the last days. Ladies and gentlemen, I have you to know that history, these are the closing date of history. And every effort should be made to be faithful. Hear me, my guests, hear me. Those in their homes, hear me. Those who are online. This, we have come to a point in time that we need to know God for ourselves. Revelation 14, 6 on down. Let me read quickly for you. And I saw, and I saw, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel read with me church to preach unto them you and I that dwell dwells on the earth and to every nation and king dread and tongue read a little louder and people saying with what kind of voice with a loud voice what should we do fear 
God. Fear whom? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made what heaven and earth the sea and the fountains of waters and here follow another angel saying Babylon I did tell you what Babylon is it has to do with confusion Babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the third angel followed him saying with what kind of voice to loud voice if any man it doesn't matter if you're white if you're black if you're rich if you're poor if you live uptown or, or downtown educated or non-educated can I tell you ladies and gentlemen I want you to understand if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of who God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his hated nation and he shall be tormented with what fire and brimstone in the presence of the only angels and in the presence of the lamb and watch verse 11 said and the smoke and the what smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever and they have no rest day no night to worship the beast and his image and whosoever receive the mark of his name I told you what the mark of the name is I told you that mark of the beast has nothing to do with 666 it has to do with worship here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and of the faith of whom Jesus and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me write John these words write John blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth ye saith the spirit that they may rest from their what? labors and their works to follow them ladies and gentlemen there's a book that is open in God's kingdom that is called the Lamb's book of life and everything that you have done and I have done is recorded in the Lamb's book of life and if you turn to 2 Corinthians verse 5 and 10 chapter 5 verse number 10 for we must all we must do what? can't hear you for we must do what? all for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done whether it is good or whether it is bad whether we believe it or not whether we like it or not whether we profess to be Christian or not whether we are rich and or we are poor whether we are black or we are white can I talk to you we all must stand before the judgment power of God God has no favorite for when we are summoned by the court of heaven we must appear before the judgment power of God the pastors will have to stand the evangelists will have to stand the treasurers will have to stand the presidents will have to stand it does not matter the prime minister will have to stand the governor general will have to stand all of us must stand before the judgment power of God Hebrews 9 verse 27 said as it is appointed unto man once to die but after death comes the judgment when the term fear God it means give glory to him we must lift up the name of Jesus can I tell you God deserves worship respect God some of us we have no respect for God we live how we want to live can I tell you you might live as you please but you won't 
die like the trees there is a coming back up for you in the judgment whatever you put in that's what will be coming out I fear the moments I'm living in because we don't know when our names will be called you don't know when your name will be called and if your name is called and you are not living in accordance to God's will can I have you to know there are people who are living on planet earth that the probation is actually closed when you blaspheme against the spirit of God when the spirit of God knocks at your door and you constantly turn him away he's gonna walk away and do not come back I stop to tell you Revelation 3 20 said behold I stand at your door and knock and if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come in and sup with him and he with me I'm glad to tell you that Jesus he wants to save you he wants to save all of us are you listen to me out here ladies and gentlemen it doesn't matter a mess up you are there is a foul ten filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinner who plunge beneath that flow will lose all their guilt and stain it will not be you alone that will be our judgment Jesus will pass are you listen to me the record will be open the books will be open and you will see he tried everything he has done everything to save you. He pitched a tent in Spanish town. He placed placards over Spanish town. He announced it on the radio. And I tell you, there was a lot looking on the record. Jesus did everything to save mankind. But I want you to know, you will not be going to hell by Jesus. You'll be sending yourself to hell because we choose the path that we want to go there's a broad road that leads to eternal domination but there's a narrow road that leads to life eternal it may be rocky it may be rough but with Christ in the vessel we can smile at the storm I say to the church of the living God hold fast stay on board pray on hope on fight on God not finished with us yet the road may be rocky the road may be rough but with Christ in the vessel we can smile at the storm and Jesus as he stretched out his hand he said father my blood was shed for this one father my blood was shed for that one I went to place called Calvary just to save a wretch like him but he chose to take the other road but thank God he's gonna say come he blessed those who accept God's divine will I stop to tell you at the judgment power of God you either be here from the lips of God enter or depart enter or depart ladies and gentlemen what I like about God he will never give you what you don't deserve can I talk to you tonight ladies and gentlemen I want you to know that angels will have to fold their wings because they don't know the joy that salvation brings it's dangerous Spanish town to see light and choose darkness it is dangerous to see the hand of God being stretched out and turn back and walk away it is dangerous to see the handwriting on your wall and ignore them I stop to ask the question who will be able to stand at the judgment bar of God but I'm glad to tell you that my Jesus will never leave me he is my lawyer he is my judge and when he stands at my side can I tell you 
you heaven will be silent he said God I'm glad to tell you when he stands for you no devil in hell can touch God's people feeble and defective though this church may be it is still the one object upon the face of the earth in which God bestow a supreme record touch somebody and tell them hold fast touch somebody and tell them stay on board the road may be rocky the road may be rough but Jesus made us a promise in good times and in bad times I will be with you come on church press the business on don't get discouraged I'm saying to Signum come on press on St. John's press on Fillmore press on Diamond Acre press on we have a battle to accomplish and only God can I have five minutes to leave. The reality is in 1844 was the fulfillment of the second angel's message when thousands left the church. And the third angel's message was later understood as a call for God's people to observe the Seventh-day Sabbath. It is the three angel messages that help to form the foundation of the Seventh-day Heavenly Church. And you will find that in Revelation chapter 15 and chapter 16, God, wrath, in the last days will come in the form of a seven last plague. And that sermon is coming up. Those who have received the mark of the beast. Those who turn their backs on God's truth. Those who have rejected the Holy Sabbath. Which carries the components of the seal. I'm going to say something that will shock you tonight. Some of you have been Seventh-day Adventists for years and don't know it. The Sabbath can't seal you. The Sabbath cannot seal you. It is God who seals us. When you bring your baby to the church, the pastor can't bless your baby. It is God who does the blessing. The Sabbath carried the components of the seal. And in order to be sealed, you have to keep the Sabbath. Baptism cannot save you. But in order to be saved, you have to be baptized. The commandment can't save you. It is God who saves you. Saves us. And will save us. But in order to be saved. You have to keep his commandments. So at the judgment. God you can't bribe God. So when you get pulled over. You have a little thousand dollar to give God. And if God don't want to take a thousand, you put five more on it, make it six thousand. So it doesn't matter how much you have contributed to the church, how much tithe, how much block you have laid. And some of you, if you don't get to bury in churchyard, you're vexed. Family members vex because my mother built the church. You being buried in churchyard won't get you apart in God's kingdom. And so, I, I, 
since, since I came to this meeting, this, this, this meeting, I, I have been, God has been opening my understanding and I've never seen anything like this before. I think this series, Pastor Smith, is planned directly for me. And that is the reason why I am not comfortable with a number of things, but I'm not disturbed because this is not my business. This is God's business. And I can't fight God's battle. God is capable and able to fight his own battle. The battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. But at the same time, I have standing in a situation. Let me share a story with you. While you were president in North Jamaica Conference, I, I, I met a young man who became pastor now. He's in the youth. I'm not going to call his name. But I had a dream one night, Pastor Smith. And I saw a number of persons in the dream that I know and I didn't know. I saw a group on a hill dressed in white. And I saw color, different color on the outside of the hill. There's a wall, there's a, there's a fence to separate the, 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 the hill from the, from the outside, from the other side. And I was neither on the side where those were in white. And I saw that young man, that pastor, he's now a pastor. I saw him on the inside dressed in white. And on the outside, I saw many colors, included black. And I was neither on this side nor the other side. And I know that there's no middle ground when it comes to God. And I came out of that dream crying. Because I have preached hundreds, thousands into the church. And I told myself, by God's grace, I don't want to preach people in brother scott and i be a castaway i can come here every night and give good contribution to the meetings and you can come here dr spence and give good contribution to the meetings and the praise team and the persons who are playing but it's just a mere form of formality And, and, and what made me nervous is that we are living between two passages of scriptures. Revelation 6, verses number 13 and number 14. And number 13 have already fulfilled. But number 14 is to be fulfilled. And any time now, all the signs they have fulfilled. And anytime you die, Jesus come for you. Because you will not know the time between August what 21st, 2024, to whatever time the Father have in place. And you will be anticipating being taken up to be with God because you have been coming every night with your Bible under your arm, on your phone. You have a Christ-like, uh, you know, uh, intention. You have been coming to church. But there's one little thing that has been holding you back. And that would be the cause or the detriment of a lot of us. <laughs> I don't know what it is. For some it's pride. For some it's being stiff naked. For some it's being own way. For some it's sex, flesh. For some it's money. For some it's false worship. And I am appealing to this congregation and those who are online and myself. Please, this message tonight is one of the most serious message that we'll ever preach. Who will be able to stand? A lot of surprise gonna be in heaven 
Because who you think gonna be, should be there, you, you might not see them there. And who you thought that would never be there, you are gonna, might see them there. And the greatest of all is by the grace of God that you have made it there. I don't know for some of you what you decide to do to spend good times in church and go to hell. But I would recommend if you do not plan to go to heaven, go back in the world and have good times. Because it doesn't make sense you stay in church and go to hell. So let us reason together tonight. Your intention is to go to heaven. My intention is to go to heaven. By only by God's grace, we can make it. You have some stuff you need to confess. You have some stuff you need to ask God to help you to get over. You know who you are. One by one, if you identify them tonight, no playing, no singing, just stand up where you are. If you identify that which you need God to help you to get over, just stand right where you are. Don't let pride get in the way. Not because you're a pastor, not because you're a president, not because you're a treasurer, not because you're a first seller. If you have identified something, I have identified something. I need to ask God. And, and I can tell you mine, intemperance is one, because I think I can done this work. But this work might done me. Some others you can't tell it because people use it against you. Tell only God. There are some members in this congregation. I told you the first week that your baptism expired and you don't believe me. I said your baptism is expired. The life that you are now living, you cannot be saved in God's kingdom as you are. And membership alone can do it. If you're here tonight, and you see where you and God are not on speaking terms, you don't have worship anymore, you don't read the Bible as you used to do anymore, you don't pray as you used to be anymore, you need to make a decision tonight. That's for the members, for my guests. You came here tonight because you want a message. You get one that is bigger than you. But the good thing about this message is that not only the members will be standing at the judgment bar, but you will be standing there too. And you don't want to be lost. You can come in at the 11th hour and still be saved. Are you listening to me tonight? So I'm going to make two calls tonight. And Pastor Smith is here to pray again. Prayed before, praying again. I'm calling for our guests, all our guests, who are serious about making a commitment to God, come forward. God bless you, son. You're serious about making a commitment to God, come forward. Come forward. Bible instructors, help them for me, please. You're serious about making a commitment to God. Come forward. Serious times we're living in, you know. You're serious about it. Come forward. They're coming, man. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Uh, this is God's business. They don't need to worry about a thing. Worrying is sin. Are you hearing me, church? You know, I'm nothing to do with me. It's, it's God's business. They're coming. They're coming. The second call, you're members of the church, you used to walk with God, and you have a membership, but it's not too right. You plan to recommit your life, just walk out. Come on, walk out. Walk out and come. You plan to recommit your life, just walk out and come. Walk out and come. You plan to recommit your life this Sabbath. The water is there, the pool is there. You plan to recommit your life, just walk out, walk out. It's not my mother, nor my father, but it's me, oh Lord. 
standing in the need of God's grace. They, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. They plan to recommit. Plan to recommit, plan to recommit, plan to recommit. Plan to recommit their lives. Members, even if you are an officer in the church, and you know things ain't right, don't be afraid, don't let pride get in the way. Walk out from where you are and come. I told you that it was a church in New York City, the first elder recommitted his life because he knew that he cannot be saved based on how he was living. Come on down, come on down. Come down, bring them down for me, please. Bring them down, they are coming. If we have to recommit some on the team, we recommit them too. Amen, somebody? The evangelists have to go back in the water. He's going back too. Don't let pride get in the way. Let us let go and let God. Tonight is a different call. Different call. Different call. Come down. Come down. Let me, let me help those who don't have the courage to come now. You're here for the first time. Watch me now. First, you have come to a tent, Adventist tent. Your first time come, raise your hand for me, please. All my first time comers. Let's raise your hand. All my first time comers. All my first time comers. I'm seeing some hands going up. I see a young lady to the back. All my first time comers. Are their hands going up? I'm going to invite all my first time comers to come. I want to pray with you. All my first time comers. There's a lady, she's coming. All my first time comers, I want to pray with you. Come on. All my first time comers, they're coming, they're coming. That call is different from this call. All my first time comers, she's coming, Pastor. Shake her hand for me, please. You're, you're a guest. And you're here tonight. Just move forward, move forward. I know my time is gone, but this is very important. Because all these people at the altar, they are making a commitment to God. They are doing what? This coming Sabbath, the water will be troubled. and Many have decided, many have decided to make it right with their God. I would to God that all of Spanish town would come. Do we have any guests in the congregation who are not members? Just turn to their members for me, please, and ask them if they are guests. Any guests at all. Just turn to their members. If they are a guest, walk with them down. Every guest here tonight. Come on, members. Come on, we're working this together. Come on, members. They're online, please, in the chat. There's a Google form. Put it in the, on the screen for me, please. And the barcode, scan it on your phone. All my guests, if you're here tonight, just walk them down for me, please. All my guests, all my guests, just walk them down for me, please. I need every single guest here tonight. You're a visitor, you're a guest, come. Come, come right now, come right now. Don't take this lady here light, don't take her light. She's happy in Jesus, we love you, amen. It's your first time? I saw you before, right? Yes, it's not your first time. Did you sign a card? Come here. You say, Lord Jesus, a red person you call upon. <laughs> don't worry, man, I just call you to shake your hand, that's all. So you don't have to worry. I hear she said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and the right person you're calling on. Amen, somebody? Amen. Can the church put their hands together for all these who have made a commitment? This was a specific call. Specific call. And Pastor Smith will be getting all the names in his hands. And he'll be praying for these. Oh, they're still coming. They're still coming. Come down, come down. They're still coming. They're still coming. And I challenge every young people to bring a, a friend. You, you, can, can, can you bring her down? I want to shake her hand. I want to shake her hand. Bring her down, man. Bring her down. I know my time is gone, but you have rest night tomorrow night. Shake her hand. And shake your hand too. Commendation. You bring the two of you, sir? Who's the member? You're the member. They are members, and the both of you are cousins, and you, which of you is a member of the church? You're not member, none of you are a member yet. Not yet. Can you sign them up for me, please? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't move too far. Stay right here. Don't go too far. Stay right here. 
Sign them up for me, please. Sign them up. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Sign them up for me, please. The, the waters will be troubled and sour. Amen, somebody? I want to talk to the parents. Put the parents' number on it, too. I want to call the members of the church. Do it quickly. Time is going. Time is going. These people weren't dragged out of their seats. Are you with me, church? Come on, talk to me, man. These people weren't dragged out of their seats. Am I right? They walked freely. Amen? But there are still some who didn't have the courage to come. And I still want to pray for you. I still want to pray for you. There's a lady right here in that orange-looking dress right there. I want to pray for her. Could you stand? Could you stand? No, the Spirit, the Spirit show me you, man. Don't worry. No, don't worry. Yeah, man, stand up. Stand up. The Spirit show me you, man. Don't worry. And I, I, I love Jesus, you know. And I follow Jesus. When he said, do something. Sometimes I may do some things out here, brethren, and you may not like it. Or you might be hurt about it. But it's just the Holy Spirit I'm following. And, and sometimes, Pastor Smith, you know, somebody talk about the foolishness of preaching. Ah, uh, oh, God does his things. You know, I preached a sermon one night, and I thought it was the worst sermon I have preached. And somebody said, that was the best sermon you ever preached for me. I know you. When, 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 when self is slain, that's when the Holy Spirit begins to work. But the problem with some of us, we are too cocky, too boastful, too much self. There's one thing you will learn about this evangelist. Self must be slain. I want to shake your hand. I want to sh Sweet young lady for Jesus. Come to the Lord. Please, get her name for me. Sign her up. Uh, oh, you see her, right? We're going to pray. Time is gone. We're going to pray. Can I get all the cards, please? All the cards. All the cards. All the cards. Thank you very much. May I have all the cards, please. All the cards. Thank you very much. Could you hand Pastor the card, Pastor? We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. Good to have you. And the Spirit show me you. We love you. You here? Come back Friday night. I want to take her number. I want to talk to her. Amen. Amen. Can the church stand with us at this time? We're going to send you home. Those are online. Could you stand with us too? We're going to pray at this time. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Somebody else come in. Look at that. Yeah, bring her down for me, please. Bring her down. Every walk tonight is a commitment for God. For this coming Sabbath. Uh, what church you normally go to, my sister? What, what, what church you normally go to? Touch her for me now. What, what church you normally go to? Right. So we're happy to have you. And feel welcome. Amen. Feel welcome. Amen. Take her information. Let us pray, Pastor. Your heads are bowed. Hearts lifted heavenward. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Tonight, Heavenly Father, we come rejoicing. Tonight we come celebrating. Because one more time you have demonstrated that there is power in the name of Jesus. And we are praising you. And heaven is rejoicing. Because your words tonight have gone forth with power, with clarity, with conviction. Men and women have opened their hearts, searched their hearts, and we recognize we are destitute. We are hopeless without Jesus. But thank you that in Jesus there is hope. There is peace. There is joy. And hallelujah tonight, there is celebration. Hallelujah. We thank you for the words tonight, Lord. We thank you for the way you have used your servant. Yes. We thank you for the message. Yes. Who shall be able to stand? Thank you, Jesus. You have called young men to stand up for you. You have called young ladies to stand up for you. 
You have called boys and girls to stand up for you. And we say, to God be the glory. There is power in the blood. Tonight, in a very special way, these have walked from their seats. Yes. They have walked with conviction. Yes. Some might have been assisted. Some might have been encouraged. Yes. But they have followed the pre pricking of the Holy Spirit. Yes, and here they are standing around the altar. Oh, God. Oh, God, they are standing in need of prayer. Yes. They are standing in need of Jesus. And we ask you to draw near tonight. We pray in a very special way, Lord, that you will manifest yourself to each person tonight. Help them to know that the steps they have taken from their seats up to this altar must be their first steps in their journey to the kingdom of God. May they never look back from whence they came, but with their eyes fixed on Jesus, this coming Sabbath, Heavenly Father, this coming Sabbath, when the waters are troubled, May men and women, boys and girls, may all of these individuals yes. around this altar walk in and find freedom and find hope and find salvation in Jesus. You, so we ask you to seal their decision. Please, seal it for time yes. and seal it for eternity. Amen. Oh God, we recognize that the devil will be on their track. Yes. But we know that greater is he that is with us yes. than he that is in the world. Yes. Draw near these individuals tonight. Some might have problems. Some might have issues. Some might have challenges. There might be some, oh God, that the devil has set a trap for them. But break every train. Set the captive free. Deliver your children, gracious Lord. And may they find the hope that they are seeking in Jesus. In a special way, we pray not just for these around the altar. And we are asking to seal every one of them in the name of Jesus. The conquering name, the powerful name, the name above every name. But we pray not only for these around the altar, but oh Lord, if there is one person out there not yet surrendered, oh God, we pray tonight that he or she will find no rest, day or night, until they say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Take these cards, gracious Lord. Written on them are the names of your children. Yes. The decision of your children. Yes. Write down every name in the Lamb's book of life. Yes. Grant, O oh God, that they will follow through in baptism. Yes. And when Jesus Christ returns, yes. may they hear well done from his lips. Thank Forgive every one of every stain of sin and save them. Yes. Not just for time, yes. but for eternity. Once again, bless your preacher. Bless his family. Bless this conference. Bless this tent, oh God. May this tent become a lighthouse in this community. That as men and women come under this tent, they will come under the convicting, converting power of the Holy Spirit. And that they will leave convicted and converted. Hear our prayers. Go with us now. As we go home tonight. Take us home safely. Give us a good night's rest. A great day tomorrow. Yes. And bring us back Friday night for another time with Jesus. Beg you it is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.